So what is the best medieval offhand weapon for self-defense together with a sword? Hello there, Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today I want to talk with you about medieval self-defense offhand weapons together with a sword. So self-defense, one of the most important criteria for me at least is convenience. So convenience to wear and convenience to use. So you might want for any situation as an optimal offhand weapon a big shield, but that isn't too convenient to use in an everyday self-defense situation. So while an imbrocata, a rotella or any other big shield for that fact is awesome in any fighting context as an offhand weapon, they are not discussed here. Also, we are talking about medieval and renaissance times, so guns are largely out of the picture. And small crossbows, thingies, anything like that, I'll uh, don't look at it in this video as well. Okay, so let's start with my top three. In the third place is the buckler, a small shield. Ha! Tricked ya! So there's shields in here after all. But this shield especially is just so convenient to wear on your belt, on your side. Well, there are even hooks on bucklers to just directly put them into your belt so it's quite easy to use them in an everyday situation. They don't get in the way, they hang just relaxed on your side. Maybe they're uh, making a very specific noise. That would also mean danger or uh, trouble for any other passengers on the street. So there's, that's where the term swashbuckling comes from. So actually sword and buckler was prohibited in uh, several big cities because it meant you were out there looking for trouble. Just because it's an awesome combination, easy and light to wear and good in the fight. What are some cons? Well, a con is that this device is just for fighting, of course. There's pretty much no other use. Maybe you could make a bowl out of it. Um, but in any other situation, a buckler has no real use. And if it's forbidden, it's not of much use either. And of course, it's not very good against any type of thrown weapon against any type of very long weapons. It's uh, not that optimal anymore. So, because they can just thrust or uh, throw it around. So, of course, the buckler has some drawbacks um, against the big shield, which should be expected. Okay, so in the second place is the dagger, or more specifically the parrying dagger. Of course, there are many daggers around and a knife or a dagger is easily wearable on your body as well. Probably most medieval folks had some sort of a knife on their body already. And of course, a dagger or any kind of weapon is good to have in a self-defense situation increases your odds, it has some psychological effects on your offenders and uh, what's great, it's easy to draw. But of course, depending on the weapons of your opponents, a dagger might not be the optimal uh, device for a self-defense situation because depending on the dagger, it can leave your offhand quite open. Okay, so there are certain daggers, daggers uh, especially in Renaissance and later times, which had uh, several knuckle bows or like a sail over here to protect the offhand when you're extending it forward. And then with these implements, it pretty much becomes a buckler with a point. But in your offhand, the dagger has several capabilities to displace any thrusts that are coming to you. 
And of course, even if you don't have the time to draw your sword, it might be faster or uh, more convenient to draw the dagger, especially in uh, close places. Okay, before we come to the first place, let's talk about some honorable mentions. Of course, any weapon that you can pick up, so any makeshift weapon, can be a useful weapon for a self-defense uh, situation as well. So a chair might be great because it's up to your hand, close, it can block, it can parry, and you can offend someone and get away. But what if you don't have a chair or a stick at your disposal? Well. If you have a sword, you probably have one of these, a sword sheath. And not only Fioris shows you to, uh, to use this in a useful manner, but after all, it's also just a big stick. So you can use your sword with the sword sheath in your offhand. So first honorable mention. Okay, and what would be better than one sword? Well, you could also use two swords. Of course, depending on the time, two swords might be not quite as affordable as in later times, but defending with two swords is actually a thing. If you look at uh, Renaissance sources like Godinho, who shows you how to defend with two swords in a narrow street. So, two swords might be the thing to keep your space clear and defend yourself at all times while being also very convenient to wear at your side. Okay, and in the first place, the cape. So the cape is actually a useful object even if you're not fighting. If you're not fighting, it keeps you warm, it does exactly what you want it to do, and if you're fighting, it becomes some mobile armor. Well, it's even mobile armor if it's on your, on your shoulders, but in your hands it becomes even more useful. I would say um, a cape is like a poor man's rotella, but considering that capes could be quite expensive, that might be not really an informative comment of myself. So, but a cape, you can block strikes, especially if you're stepping into them. As Giovanni della Gocchia advises, you block the opponent's sword at the forte, so in the lower half where the cutting power is quite diminished. But you can also, of course, displace thrusts to your sides. You can blind your opponent and after all, it looks really cool, doesn't it? Okay, so if you haven't seen already through my scheme, all these top three weapons are, like I said, completely biased and you can learn these, of course, in the Bolognese sources. So, for instance, I would advise you to start with Giovanni Dallagocchi's single-handed sword. You can uh, find several material on that source on our channel already. And then you can progress to the sword and cape, to the sword and dagger. And then, if you're interested, you can look at Sword and Buckler in Manciolino as well, or a Marazzo. Just have a go at it and enjoy your training. Okay, so remember, if you like this video, share it with a friend and enjoy training. Ciao!
Okay, I think I'm arrow-proofed now. <laughs> oh, so this thing is heavy as 